Welcome to Untested Builds, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Comment below to suggest your favorite pop culture characters and join the Patreon to vote for your favorite suggestions. And since the channel is still small, anyone who joins the Patreon, even at the $1 tier, can send me a priority request that completely bypasses the polls and goes straight to the channel. That's what Alpha Tester Jonathan Haynes did when they requested we get back into the 40k universe with the Evasor Assassin. To the uninitiated, Warhammer 40k takes place in a science fantasy universe of epic scale. Humanity has spread itself across the Milky Way, colonizing a million worlds, annihilating any sentient life, be it alien or deviant human, as part of the Emperor's Great Crusade. By the 41st millennium, the Imperium of Man is a bloated, stagnating, corrupt empire beset on all sides by ancient technological abominations, intergalactic annihilators, and demons from another dimension. Even though the main threats to humanity typically manifest themselves as giant armies that humans counter with equally huge armies, sometimes the engagements require more personal touch. Established 10,000 years prior to the present day, the Officio Assassinorum abducts, indoctrinates, and modifies children on a cybernetic and genetic level to become hyper-efficient killing machines. The Assassinorum is divided into different clades, each with a particular specialization and organizational structure. The six founding clades were the Vindicare, elite stealth snipers able to remain motionless for weeks on end to ensure a clean kill, the Venenum, master toxicologists who create time-release poisons and venoms that leave no trace once the target has died, the Vanis, who use information acquisition, counterintelligence, and sabotage to incite others to make their kills on their behalf. Stepping into the more ridiculous half of the Assassin Temples, the Calidus use a shape-altering drug to morph their bodies into whatever humanoid appearance they choose to make themselves the ultimate in infiltration and impersonization, allowing them to take out their targets and assume their identities, usually allowing them to get one step closer to their next targets. The Calixis take advantage of a particular gene that allows them to nullify the abilities of nearby psychers, making them particularly useful at eliminating humanity's more esoteric enemies and traitors. Then finally, there's the Evasaur. Their assassins are so hyped up on stimulus and performance enhancers that they need to be kept in cryostasis to prevent their bodies from literally burning themselves out. While on ice, they are not only pre-programmed with all the knowledge that they'll need for their next mission, but their minds are also psycho-conditioned to send their bodies into a homicidal rage at the mere sight of their target and anyone else they see as an obstacle to get to them making them more of an active grenade compared to the surgical takedowns of the other assassin clades. For our goals for this build, our body was purpose-built to handle obscene amounts of abuse, not only from the drugs and procedures used to create us, but also from any incidental injuries we might take while getting up close and personal with our targets. Second, we can't let anything get in between us, so we're gonna need as many movement types and mobility as we can get. Lastly, we've got another build with way more weapons and hands. We've got to accommodate a heavy ranged weapon, a poison tipped claw, and a power sword able to cut through any armor we might find ourselves up against. For our stats, we're maxing strength. We've taken so many drugs to make ourselves as athletic as possible, and most swords use strength so that lines up. Constitution and wisdom next, that kind of biological tinkering is either going to kill you or make you thick AF, and all of our knowledge is programmed in and tracking your target is generally going to be a survival check. Next we're taking a voluntary flaw to boost our dexterity. We've got a sword, but we've got a gun too, and that's dexterity. Lastly, we're dumping charisma and intelligence. We're just here to kill people, not scare them or talk to them, just kill them. No soft stats needed. For our skills, we really only care about our physical prowess, so we're taking legendary acrobatics and athletics. Not a whole lot else going on in the noodle here. Master survival and expert medicine so we can find the target and patch ourselves up if we get hurt. We've also got vague memories of home with training in lore from a settlement of our choice, which is honestly pretty generous considering most episodes never get the chance to think of anything other than the mission at hand. If the Imperium decides that the form you were born with is inadequate for the task at hand, you can kiss your humanity goodbye. Created flesh webs gain low light vision, a plus one circumstance bonus against poisons, and a plus two circumstance bonus against diseases. We also don't need to eat and we can't die of starvation as our body gets everything it needs intravenously from our implants. We'll take the scavenger background. Evasor recruitment is basically just a battle royale with other children on a massive spaceship with limited life support. Guess we survive by just avoiding contact because we got training in survival and the forger skill, meaning we can no longer fail to subsist in any environment we find ourselves in, and we can either gather sustenance for up to four more friends. Not like we'd ever have those though. For our ancestry feat, Living Weapon gives us our choice of a 1d4 claw attack, a 1d6 tusk attack, or a 1d8 tail attack. We usually wear a full face mask and giving a person a tail might just push them over the threshold of what counts as a human in this universe. So claw attack it is. We may be called an assassin, but we're actually the least assassiny assassin that ever assassined. We're a retaliation incarnate, a whirlwind of death with four limbs. That's right, we're a barbarian. Level 1 barbarians gain the rage action, giving us temporary hit points equal to our level plus our constitution modifier, and we get 2 extra damage on our melee attacks. 
but at the cost we take a minus two penalty to our ac and we lose the ability to use actions with the concentrate trait except for seeking for one minute or until there aren't any more enemies we can perceive or we fall unconscious we also choose an instinct to determine the source of our rage the fury instinct doesn't give us any specific bonuses or anathema but we do get to choose two level one class feats instead of one acute vision gives us dark vision while we're raging pretty simple and sudden charge lets us start combat by striding twice and if we end our movement within reach of an enemy we can make a melee strike against them we can use our climbing speed or swimming speed for this too once we get those movement types we're immediately taking the dual weapon warrior dedication in addition to letting us take additional dual weapon warrior feats down the line this gives us the double slice feat for free Meaning if we're wielding two melee weapons in two hands, we can strike with both weapons against a single enemy, taking a minus two on the second strike if that weapon doesn't have the agile trait. This doesn't do too much for us just yet since technically our claw attack doesn't count as wielding a melee weapon. Honestly, this is just one of the few times where I would actually just flat out recommend asking your DM to let you have this as a free archetype since it legit won't help you until level four. Anyway, something that you can use immediately, even if you're in combat, is battle medicine, allowing us to make a check similar to treat wounds to heal an amount of HP even during combat, then that target becomes immune for one day. Level 3 barbarians gain deny advantage. We aren't flat footed to hidden, undetected, or flanking creatures our level or lower, nor to creatures our level or lower using surprise attack. We'll take fast recovery, giving us twice as many hit points back from resting, and we recover from diseases and poisons more quickly too on successful 4 to 2 saves which we're kind of really good at as a flesh warp barbarian. The experience tracker feat allows us to track at full speed by taking a minus five penalty to the required survival check. The sooner we kill the target, the sooner we can get back on ice and our heart won't explode. We're basically the galaxy's most violent Mr. Meeseeks. The dual thrower feat has a great name. We can use thrown weapon strikes when we use our double slice or any feat that references double slice. Paradoxically, we can also use ranged weapon attacks with our double slice too, which means we can finally get our hand crossbow sword dual wielding fighting style online even if it's not completely optimized just yet. Level 5 barbarians gain brutality for expert proficiency in simple and martial weapons and unarmed attacks, and we get the critical specialization effects for melee and unarmed strikes. For our claw attack, they'll get slowed 1 until the end of their next turn unless they pass a 4 to 2 save, and with our sword they'll become flat footed for 1 round. The powerful Guts Ancestry feat makes us practically immune to the sickening condition. Whenever we succeed on a 4 to 2 check to reduce our sickening condition, we reduce it by 2 instead and 3 on a critical success. Titan Wrestler is kind of necessary in a world where humans are regularly between 8 and 10 feet tall and of course there's still demons and aliens even larger lurking around. We can perform trip and disarm actions on creatures up to 2 sizes larger than us. I mentioned we were using a 9 ring sword so we can disarm enemies even without a free hand right? That's kind of relevant suddenly. We can also reload now with the free hand. Dual weapon reload lets us use an interact action to reload a ranged weapon we're holding even if we have a melee weapon in the other hand. A dueling pistol would be strictly better weapon than a hand crossbow if they actually existed in your game that is. Level 7 barbarians gain juggernaut for master fortitude saves and critical success results on regular successes. Weapon specialization gives us an extra 2 damage on our claw and sword attacks and increasing our bonus rage damage as well. We'll get some more combat stems in the system with incredible initiative for a plus two circumstance bonus to all initiative rolls. So in preparation for this build, I actually read a 40k book, specifically a Horace Heresy novel, which actually takes place in 30k called Nemesis. It's an awesome sci-fi book. Honestly can't say how good it is in comparison to other Warhammer novels, but this book is basically a team up novel with the top assassin of each clade forming a ragtag group that attempt an unprecedented mission where literally everything goes wrong. And the Evasaur on the team is basically kept awake way too long. He's deranged, he's honestly charismatic, dripping with cheeky one-liners and violent threats that you know he could absolutely follow through on, but won't allow his baser instincts to jeopardize the mission. But that's not the typical environment for an Evasaur. An Evasaur is what you'd expect if you like dropped Wolverine into a pit filled with Sentinels. It's gonna be epic destruction, shreds of Sentinel and Logan all over the place. But you know, eventually Wolverine is gonna use those claws to climb his way out when he's done. I'm sorry, there's no real segue here. I just wanted to talk about that book for a second. We're taking the Raging Athlete feat so we can get a climb speed and a swim speed to equal to our ground speed while we're raging and we get easier DCs for long and high jumps and we increase the distance we're able to leap. You know me, anytime I start talking about jumping, I am contractually obligated to remind you of the existence of the quick jump feat. It lets us make a long or a high jump in a single action instead of two and we no longer automatically fail for not making the initial stride action. Level 9 Barbarians gain Raging Resistance, granting us resistance equal to 3 plus our constitution modifier to melee weapon damage while we are raging. Lightning Reflexes increases our reflex saves to Expert, 
coating of slime gives our victims a taste of the medicine that made us. Whenever we crit on an unarmed attack, the target also takes 1d4 of persistent acid damage. Not exactly an instant death poison, but maybe your venom ally can help you with that. We'll pick up Kip Up so we can pick ourselves up from prone without triggering reactions as a free action. Fencing Slice fills our sadistic hearts with glee. Whenever we use a double slice and hit both weapons on our enemy, we can spend an action to make the target take 1d8 persistent bleeding damage for each weapon die of damage from the weapon we use with the highest number of damage die. Honestly, I just give my players automatic fundamental and potency runes for their weapons. So at level 10, that's a three weapon damage die. So that's 3d8 persistent bleeding damage as a reward for hitting with both of our weapons. Level 11 Barbarian's game, Mighty Rage, but we don't actually have any rage actions we can perform, so oof. We'll take the fleet feet for an extra five feet of movement speed, meaning we get better at swimming and climbing, and we can jump a little bit further while we're raging too. Second Wind allows us to enter a second rage if our first ends without needing to wait a minute, but at the end of our second rage, we become fatigued for 10 minutes. And Nevisaur literally never stops raging, but this will have to do. Continual recovery lets us treat wounds on a target after only 10 minutes instead of one hour. Level 13 Barbarians gain Weapon Fury for Master Proficiency in Simple and Martial Weapons as well as Unarmed Strikes. This also increases our Weapon Specialization damage from 2 to 3. Medium Armor Expertise gives us Expert Proficiency in Medium and Light Armor as well as an Armor Defense. And Greater Juggernaut gives us Legendary Fortitude Saves, Regular Fails on Critical Fails, and whenever we fail on a Fortitude Save that would deal damage, we only take half the damage instead. The Augment Senses Ancestry Feet allows us to use another OP Evasor ability. Using a combination of our combat stems and equipment, we can quickly process sensory information in a 360 degree area at superhuman levels. Until the start of our next turn, we can't be flanked, and when we seek for creatures, we seek in a 60 foot cone or a 30 foot burst, and when we seek for hidden objects, we search in a 15 foot square instead of the usual area. The main problem we have as a dual weapon warrior with a barbarian raging athlete is that we can't climb or grab an edge since both of our hands are full. Meaning, if we can't completely mount or leap over a wall, we're going to have to spend an action to stow our weapon, then climb, then pull the weapon back out when we get up there. Wall jump effectively lets us double jump so long as we land our first jump on or adjacent to a wall. The dual onslaught feat makes our strikes a bit more reliable too. If we use double slice and miss both strikes, we can automatically apply the strike of one of our weapons so long as the strike would not have been a critical failure. Level 15 Barbarians gain Indomitable Will for Master Will saves and critical success results on regular successes. Greater Weapon Specialization increases the bonus damage we receive from Weapon Specialization to 3 to 6. We also increase our bonus Rage damage from 6 to 12. We might only live half the normal lifespan of a baseline human, but until we burn out, we're about as hard to take down as any Space Marine. The Toughness feat gives us an additional amount of max HP equal to our level and our recovery checks are 9 plus our dying condition value instead of 10 plus. We may have a climb speed while raging, but a climb speed outside of rage can be useful too. The quick climber feat gives us a climb speed equal to our movement speed since we're legendary in athletics. Penetrating projectile gives us a bit of that bolter flavor. We can make a ranged weapon strike and hit every creature in a 30 foot line, ignoring all cover provided by creatures. We roll a strike against each creature, but we only roll damage once and apply it to all the creatures hit. We kind of make more sense the other way around, but okay, whatever. And yeah, these strikes count towards our multi-attack penalty, but don't actually increase until we've made all of the attacks. Level 17 Barbarians gain Quick Rage, allowing us to rage again after only one round instead of waiting a full minute. But we already had this with our second win, so it's probably a good time to go ahead and retrain that particular class feat. Heightened Senses increases our perception proficiency to master. I'm kind of bummed that there aren't any level 17 Flesh Warp feats. Guess Paizo really wants us to pick up a versatile heritage or an adopted ancestry with this. Oh well. Mutate Weapon allows us to spend an action to either give our living weapon an increased range of 10 feet or give it a plus one status bonus to attack rolls until the end of the turn. We may have a swim speed while raging, but a swim speed outside of rage can be useful too. The quick swim feat gives us a swim speed equal to our movement speed since we're legendary in athletics. Why does that sound so familiar? All these missions start to run together when you spend all your downtime on ice. Brutal Critical lets us punch even higher out of our weight class. Now whenever we crit on a melee strike, we add an extra weapon damage die, and they also take two more damage die of persistent bleeding damage. Level 19 Barbarians gain Armor of Fury for Master Proficiency in Light and Medium Armor and an Armor Defense and Devastating Strikes for Master Barbarian Class CC and Melee Strikes that ignore 10 points of physical damage resistance. Just because we're a thorough assassin doesn't mean we can just dawdle around. The Expedition Search feat allows us to search an area at double the speed of other characters, meaning we can move twice as fast while exploring an area to make sure that we find any survivors and make them unsurvive. 
We've got a whole bunch of health, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't take precautions when we leap into battle. The Catfall feat prevents us from taking fall damage entirely since we're legendary in acrobatics. For our capstone feat, our regular sword finally becomes a power sword. Annihilating Swing lets us make a melee strike that ignores any resistances to targets we hit, and if we hit a solid object, that object is immediately destroyed unless it has a hardness greater than 20, even if the object is magical. We attempt to counteract the magical effect, and if we're successful, we destroy the object outright. Like most feats that just outright destroy objects, this automatically fails if we try to use it on an artifact. Probably good to ignore that clause in a 40k setting. All the important one-of-a-kind items are notoriously ancient and fragile. But now that we're level 20, let's look at the pros and cons of the build. Big damage is the main draw here. Extra rage damage and extra opportunities to attack with the dual weapon feats. We also get a lot of added persistent damage between Brutal Critical and Flinching Slice. With AC of 40 and almost 400 HP while raging, we're basically a raid boss in our own right. We also never have to worry about dying outside of combat either. Never needing to eat and being particularly impossible to poison and succumb to disease means we're a perfect weapon. For cons, we've got some pretty sub-bar action economy. You're honestly going to be better off just using your hand crossbow during the first round, dropping it, and pulling out a second sword and starting our rage. If we get some kind of revolver or double barrel handgun in Guns and Gears, I might change my mind, but even the playtest drifter wasn't able to make a convincing range plus melee fighter. We're also really bad at anything that doesn't involve tracking and killing people. We've got a negative penalty to fully half of the skills in the game. So we're probably better off never talking to anyone. Not that we ever really wanted to. Evasaurs almost always work alone. But I won't stop you from grabbing your GM and playing this character in an assassin one shot or find yourself a party that knows how to just step out of your way and let you do you. Thanks for tuning in to another build. Join the Patreon to have your name featured here. Download these character sheets and to vote in the current Marvel poll between Ghost Rider, Baymax, and Spider-Man. Have a good week, take care, and play more Pathfinder.